Right, so let's look at some malware analysis. So with malware analysis, what we want to do is we want to be able to detect the basic footprint of the uh, the malware in terms of its payload, in terms of its footprint, in terms of the the files that it changes, uh, the the events that it triggers on, such as if we reboot the computer, will it reinstall itself? We need to look at its network presence, what it tries to connect to, so that we can set our intrusion detection systems up to be able to detect it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll actually run our sandboxed environment. Okay, so here we are. And so we have our malware here. So this is a clean XP, so it hasn't been modified at all. So let's start Warshark just to just to examine what the background traffic is so that we can actually identify when the bot actually starts up. Okay, so we've just got some background traffic here. So the first thing we must do is that we must disconnect from the internet. Okay, so network connections, rather than disconnecting our network so that the, the malware wouldn't connect, try to connect, we'll give it a private address so it's non-routable. And we'll give it different addresses to see what the basic signs are. Uh, that's the IP address, it's got a different gateway and it's got a DNS server. So we should see it talking to the network. So we just stop and then we'll just restart that again. Okay, so there we go. It's normal background traffic uh, talking to the, the NetBIOS port, looking to resolve names and so on. Okay, so that's that's good. That's just our background traffic. So what we'll do now is that we'll run the malware and the pesky little malware doesn't do anything. Hmm, that's not very good, is it? Bit disappointing. We thought there'd be fireworks, but uh, it just didn't happen. And everything looks okay here. Just a request for DNS. A DNS server. So, looks like nothing's actually happened. So it's quite disappointing. Oh, here we go. And we've now got our basic sign. So this is using the uh, NetBIOS, so it's getting under the radar <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, TCP IP. So it's broadcasting to the whole of our domain uh, for that uh, name. So it's obviously trying to do a callback now. We want to let it do that because we're not connected to the network. Okay, so that, that means it's, it's running. You can see there that that's been a, a, a change. So the first thing we must do is to be able to find the pesky malware. And I didn't show you this, but this has now been created. If you look up the web page for the malware, we actually find that it creates that. So it looks like there's nothing actually in there. So the malware developer will always try and cover their tracks. And here it is here. So we found it. So can we get rid of it? Okay, so arrays. We managed to get rid of it there. Or did we? <laughs> this is back. So we can't use arrays. Looks like it's gone and it's actually still there. So how are we going to do this? So if we look at the attributes on it, we actually see it's a system file. And it's also read-only, and it's hidden. So the way we get rid of it is that we set the reset the attributes for system and for hidden, and uh, it's read-only too. So we'll do it to that one. Ah, so we've got it, and there, and we've got that one too. Just one last little thing, we got rid of get rid of the read-only attribute on 
this one here. Ah, so here we go. Say goodbye to the malware. That's gone. Okay, so you can see how difficult that was actually. <laughs> we had to reset the system hidden read. So it's hiding itself, hidden file. It's defining itself as a system file, which really can't be deleted unless we uh, we reset the attribute. And it defines itself as a read-only. It's doing everything that it can to, to stop us from seeing it. So the place that we go to find it, if it will restart. So if we rebooted, where, what is it that keeps the uh, the thing reinstalling itself? Okay, so for each user, there are entries in the key. So let's look at software. Let's look at Microsoft. And let's look at Windows. We look at current version. And then the place we often look is in Run. Oh, so here we go. So these are all the programs that are run. So we see MSN Messenger starts up automatically here in the background. And look, the malware has managed to put himself in there. So every time we reboot, it will run this and we are reinfected. Obviously it won't do it now because we've actually got rid of the program, which is a good thing obviously, but we'd get rid of that one. So that's gone. Okay, is our bot doing anything? No, it just, just wants to connect to that uh, server. Hmm. Not good. So the next thing we do is we have a look at this. And uh, so what we need to do is to understand the basic setup. So what we do is to try and find a unique signature actually from the from the bot. Uh, sometimes it might have an author name, sometimes it's fairly general stuff. If we can find a unique signature then it's obviously important uh, some writers will actually put in their own their own name in here perhaps this is a unique thing there and we really just have to go through until we can actually find something that might be unique but in this case it is completely it could be completely obfuscated and it might just be a standard a few things there UPX and, and so on so the standard sign uh, of an EXE is this, this, this MZ so what we'd often do is we'd pick a part of the, the malware so let's just pick any part and then we would actually define a certain signature and then we'd hope that that signature was actually fairly unique uh, without looking at other programs and seeing if that signature exists, it can be actually quite difficult to see it. But you can see that there isn't really, there's lots of Zs there. That, that could be interesting. And what I've got there, that looks like standard, standard code there. Aha. Uh -huh. So we've got a few things in here. There's kernel 32 and, and so on. Few little things there, but if we can, we can really can really pick out something that our our scanner could actually detect. Okay, so if not, we'll probably just pick a, a random point in it. So that's the that's the hex uh, analysis of it. Just let's see if it's if it's actually trying to do anything here, and it isn't. So just to let you see how scary this, this this malware actually is, let's let it connect.
Okay, so then we'll just disconnect here. There we go. And it's away. It's it's away. So then what we'll do is we'll just disable that. Let's have a look at this. Okay, and this this is really doing everything under the sun that it that it really can. So when we let it loose, there we go. So there's a there's a there's a ping in there. It's finding out it's alive. It's then uh, and doing a doing a broadcast there. So once it actually manages to connect, we should find uh, it does a it does a DNS. Okay, so now it knows it's on the network. It's doing a DNS request for that site, and the DNS server is responding back with the IP address. And there you go. So it's connecting to it. So the IP address that it's connecting to, if we look at it. So if we do an NS lookup on 217.23.2.159 So it's now registered, so it's, it's just a just trying to connect to a to a dummy domain. And there we go, see it's 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 uh, connecting and there we go so what it's doing is trying to connect to the email server in this case luckily it's been blocked because it's a spammer and uh, we can't connect to it okay so it does that and it really doesn't quite give up it just keeps trying and trying and trying almost like a denial of service and then it goes again it's trying to connect uh, to our Yahoo one again so you can you can see the 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 maliciousness of of this bot it's really trying to try to spam okay so that that shows uh, the analysis of some malware Obviously, that another step we can do is to is to run the the code with inside a, a debugger and actually have a look at the at the analysis of it and how it runs and how the code operates, how it's been obfuscated, and from that we'll be able to find a, a, a good signature for it.